Okay, we're looking at the help. We got uh, Mark Anderman on the left and Jim King in the middle and Doris Anderman on the right. My pen's still working out. I couldn't get it in the solder hole, so I just put it in the hook on it there and put it in between the connector there. Check your ball up there. Yeah, I'm glad you're saying that you have a small desire to try to do it. No, I missed that. You don't have to do it. Okay. We have that plug off the switchers off the track. Jim, that's off the track of the switch. Oh, okay. We have to go over the video. That's why I are you, Jim? Oh, really? Hey, you see that? What we're seeing here is the uh, automatic block on the left side yep. and the automatic yep. passing siding on the right side. Yep. We're looking at the uh, automatic block in the center, which is using a railroad concepts.com switching interface module. There's a reed switch down behind the water tower at the far end about here where that engine in the back goes over that reed switch and sets a block to green. And the block is set to green. The train in the block leaves, which in this case was that silver passenger train. Now that Pacific has stopped, the block is red. The silver train is about ready to trip it. There it goes to green. You know, it's accepted the red as it leaves the block. So the next train coming behind it gets trapped in the block, so to speak. Basically, this block system keeps two trains operating on the same track and keeps a faster one from overtaking a slower one by trapping it in the block. Because any train that's trying to catch the one ahead of it will get caught at the red block and have to wait until the other train gets about two-thirds of the way around the loop. On the right, we have the automatic passing siding operating. It's basically parks one train and lets the other train take a lap around the layout. The 080 is currently parked. You can see the dock sider is running along the far rear of the layout. Uh, that dock sider will come around and come in the uh, empty siding, uh, the magnet on the bottom of the first car where we have a locatable over a lead switch for, which will activate an automotive relay and put the American Flyer switch to straight which will put the power to the track where the 080 is, and the 080, you can see, just pulled out. On the outside loop, we have the automatic passing side. In this case, we operate two trains by parking one train and waiting until the other train comes around. The 080 just pulled in, 
and the switch went to curve, so the dock sider on the inside track pulled out. Now that dock sider will make a loop of the layout. It'll come back in on the empty track, and the switch will go back to the other side, and the 080 will travel out. So basically, one train is always parked, and one train is moving, and they, they keep alternating. It's all temporary, though. We're going to take it completely apart. The dock sider just came in and you can see the 080 pulled out. Now that train will make a loop around the layout and come back and the dock sider will leave. The Canadian Pacific diesel that pulled in on the passing siding just threw the power over to the right track and the Pacific pulled out on the automatic passing siding. You see the silver bullet stop waiting at the automatic block in the center. Just went green in the pool. Here we have an S gauge automatic passing siding in operation. Uh, basically, mode of operation is one train waits at the siding, second train comes in, goes over a lead switch, which throws in errors and fire switches, and activates the other siding. It basically alternates trains. One train will go around, uh, pull into the siding and wait in the other train to go around the loop. You can see the steam engines out on the loop now. Now that steam engine's in the slow down section and maybe it'll see it slow down just a slight bit. Now the diesel started up. I've got the rheostats turned back just a little bit. There's a rheostat to drop the voltage in what we call the startup section where it pulls out and there's a second rheostat that can drop the voltage a little bit in what we call the slowdown section where it pulls into the, to the sidings. Now that steam engine has a DCC decoder in it, so that's why it kind of starts up with a, a cushion start. The decoder, we're running this loop on DC, but the uh, decoder still gives a, a more gradual acceleration. Now I'm going to go over there and flip the knife with the toggle switch. We can actually depower this system. Flipping this switch down will depower the system. Now I, turn, I turned off the uh, current of the reed switches so that steam engine should just go right on through. It won't even stop. So you can, you can depower this system to uh, keep either train sitting there and just use one of the lines. Now we'll, we'll turn, the, uh, turn the automatic passing siding back on just by flipping this toggle switch. Now I'll turn it off again and that'll keep the steam engine parked on that siding. Now that toggle switch is turned off so the diesel should just come in and go through that siding and keep right on going. So when the, when the system's turned off like it is now, it's, it's basically a nerf. Uh, one track is just a, a stop siding. Now we'll, we'll turn it back on. Just to review how this system works, there's a, 
magnets on the there's a magnet on the drawbar of the uh, American Flyer steam engine. There's a magnet that we just hot glued on the uh, front coupler of the diesel. Those magnets go over reed switches in the track. The reed switch activates an automotive relay, which sends current to the American Flyer switch motors. So when the American Flyer switch is activated, it of course changes the track routing. And with the uh, button on the switch set the two train operation, it uh, kills the power, that is to say shuts off the power to the other siding which stops the other train. These two trains will stay on the same track all the time. The steam engine is always on the outside track. The diesel is always on the inside track. If we had it set up with another relay to operate as an automatic switching block, which we do not, but if we did, we could put three trains on the track and then they'd be continually rotating different sidings. But with two trains, each train will keep coming in the same siding. Now what you can do is manually override that thing, which I'm going to do with a piece of wire. I'm going to take a piece of wire and short across the terminals to connect to the reed switch, will simulate, which will simulate the reed switch being activated and cause a switch to activate by me using a wire rather than the uh, engines, and that way I can cause them to change tracks. Now you notice we, by manually activating the switches, we caused the steam engine to come in on the inside track and now the diesel will go, out, go to the outside track. Uh, and until the system is uh, again overridden manually, they'll, the trains will stay on that, those same two tracks.